Hello guys! In this video I want to continue my sequence of linear algebra where I'm moving towards Jordan canonical form. And in this video I want to discuss the idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In previous video we discussed that if we're given a real matrix n by n, we can think about this matrix as a mapping from Rn to Rn. In other words, if we're going to take some element x in Rn, and then we're going to apply our ma uh, matrix A on the left in our x, we're going to get another vector y in Rn. Some facts about uh, our objects, we know that Rn is a vector space, and uh, our A we can talk about as a linear transformation. Then we can ask a certain thing about our y. Before we discuss that if y is going to be zero, then we're going to get definition of nullity. But let's uh, take some matrix A. And let's say my matrix A is going to be uh, 0, 3, 1, and 2. And let's take, choose any two vectors, x. Let's choose x uh, 0, 1, x1. And let's choose x2, 1, 1. And let's see what is going to happen when we're going to take our matrix A and multiply by uh, x1 and x2. So for the first one, I will have AX1 equals to 0, 3, uh, uh, 1, 0, 1, 2. And I'm going to get 0, 1 times 0, 1. And from here, we know that we're going to get uh, 3 times 2. And then I'm going to take a look at this and see there is no difference. So let's do another one. Let's take a times x2. And for this one, I'm going to get times a vector, which was 1, 1. And from here, I can see that my first entry is going to be 0 plus 3, so it's 3. And my second entry is going to be 1 plus 2 is also 3. And 3. Here is a common factor, so I can factor 3, so we're going to get 3 times 1 and 1. Or in other words, I got that if I'm going to take my L, uh, vector x2 multiply by matrix A, I'm going to get 3, because 1, 1 is x2, I'm going to get 3x2. So we can discuss not only uh, either our y is 0 or non-zero, we also can discuss if we're going to take uh, some element z in our n. Is it going to be in the form az times lambda z, where lambda is some uh, constant, like real number, or not? And if this is true, that means that z is an eigenvector. So let's write the definition of an eigenvector with eigenvalue. Uh, so we're saying that v is an eigenvector with an eigenvalue lambda. If for ah, is the eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda uh, for matrix A? Why? Because we need to say to which matrix this is uh, eigenvector and eigenvalue correspond. And then we're saying this is if A times V is equals lambda V. One small thing that I wanted to prove and discuss, I want to show. If I'm going to give you uh, a matrix A, how you can find all possible eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors of this matrix A. So let's discuss this in the following form. Let's take this equation and move lambda v to the left hand side. And then let's rewrite lambda v, since I know that if I'm going to identity matrix times v, I'm going to get v. Then I can rewrite this as a v minus lambda I, V. And then here I'm going to factor V on the right hand side, so I'm going to get uh, A minus lambda I, V. And what we know about this, when I move this to the left hand side, on the right hand side I got zero, so the whole thing is equals to zero. Let's take a look, take a look at this for a second. And what, what is our vector V? We get some matrix times our vector v, and we got 0. And this is exactly the definition of nullity. So we're saying that v belongs to nullity of a minus lambda i. 
Here's one thing. What do you think? V equals uh, to zero is eigenvector or not? And my answer is no. Why? Because for each eigenvector we're going to see in a second, there is going to be corresponding only one eigenvalue. But if we assume that V is an eigenvector, then we're going to have A times zero equals to zero. But since uh, zero equals to const, uh, zero times some uh, any constant, then I can see that for this eigenvector I can choose any eigenvalue and this is going to be a contradiction. So we know that V belongs to nullity of A and before we discuss that we are saying that V is not equals to zero. Why it's not equals to zero? Because in this case if V equals to zero it's not an eigenvector. Here follows that nullity of a minus lambda i uh, is not equals to just zero vectors. So, so there are not only zero, there are like more vectors. So from here, show I can recover the theorem that if nullity of some matrix B equals to just zero matrix, if and only if B is invertible. So since and uh, b is invertible. So from here for since our nullity is not zero, then b is not invertible. So from here I will get that our matrix A minus lambda i is not invertible. So from here falls, and I'm going to prove this in my next video, the determinant of, of i minus lambda i equals to zero. And this is our desired formula for finding all eigenvalues. So if lambda is an eigenvalue for A, I know that a corresponding matrix A minus lambda I uh, is going to be, its determinant is going to be equals to zero. So in other words, our nullity is not going to be a zero vector. So we are done with our first step. We know that we can find all eigenvalues by just applying this formula and looking for which lambda the determinant is going to be equals to zero. So what we should we do if we want to find uh, all possible eigenvectors for corresponding eigenvalue lambda? So how are we going to find our eigenvectors? We're going to follow the following procedure. So we're going to take this equation again and I'm, now, again, I'm going to rewrite this as we did before. So it's going to be a minus i uh, lambda v equals to zero. And from here I know that V belongs to nullity of A minus lambda I. But since V belongs to nullity of A minus lambda I, and we proved in another video, in previous videos, that nullity is a, a subspace of Rn, then from here follows that there is exists a basis for nullity of A minus lambda I. And in previous video, I showed how to find the basis of nullity, and that actual basis of nullity are going to be our corresponding the, uh, eigenvalues. So in this case, if there is an, this a basis, let's say B consists of vectors V1 and V1, then from here, we're going to follow that V1 and Vn are corresponding eigenvectors of lambda. So we can see that for corresponding lambda, we can have more than one eigenvector. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just let me know. If you like this video, please uh, like me and subscribe. And uh, and have a good one. Bye-bye.